It appears as though maybe my channel liner is not far enough in. Hi guys, welcome back to Tactical Review. So, if you've been following the channel on social media, then the last week or so you've seen, well, you've seen a couple of things. Uh, one, you have seen me make a couple of posts about Instagram taking down posts from a small business. Uh, that business is called Bloody Wheels, and he makes uh, mag spacers so that um, you can use extended magazines in your Taurus G2 and G3 pistols uh, without and kind of fill out where that handguard or where the pistol grip is. Uh, so if you're rocking a Taurus and you're running either Sig mags or you're running uh, Sig or Taurus G3 mags in your G2C, uh, you might check out Bloody Wheels and uh, see what he's got for uh, grip extensions. It's uh, good looking stuff. I'd show you, but I don't have any Taurus pistols. Uh, he does good, good work though, and I always like supporting small business people, so uh, he has no idea that I was going to do this, and again, I haven't, I haven't purchased any of his products, but I've seen them in other reviews, and uh, I think it's absolute garbage what a big corporation like Facebook uses their clout to do. That's neither here nor there. Uh, the other thing that you've seen is that I have been working on a Glock 19 slide. Uh, so that I can start utilizing a red dot on my pistol. So I finally got my iron sights installed on that. Um, you can buy the stuff to do it yourself. It's not terribly difficult. Uh, however, through a mutual friend, I was able to get in contact with uh, one of my local police department's Glock armor. So I figured it was just as easy to have somebody who already had the tools and expertise install that for me. That said, I did purchase a Brownells, a Brownells strip slide, and I still have to put all the guts into it. So let's uh, go over what that entails here in this episode. All right, so as I mentioned, I have the Brownells uh, RMR cut slide. And it comes as a strip slide. Again, I've already installed my Ameriglow GL201 on the slide. And I went with the GL201s uh, because I think that will give me the lowest possible co-witness. Uh, I put a picture, a demonstration picture up on, on Instagram the other day, Instagram and Facebook the other day. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. That said, the specifications I needed to come up with um, which sights to go with, along with my Holosun 507C, uh, I actually had to reach out to Brownells, I had to reach out to Ameriglow, and I had to reach out to Holosun. With suppressor height sights, uh, the manufacturers always list what the front and rear sight heights are. But these Ameriglow sights are basically meant to be drop-in replacement sights for your factory Glock sights. And as such, they're a little taller than, than Glock sights, but because of that, uh, the fact that they're meant to just be direct replacements, I couldn't find the uh, specifications on those anywhere. Um, the deck height on the Holosun, which is the height from the bottom of the, not the pick rail, but the bottom of the actual optic, to the top of the rear deck. I couldn't find that. The depth of the slide cut here, and obviously a direct mill uh, cut is going to be your lowest possible mounting point, uh, but I couldn't find that information. So, on your screen through this conversation, I have been putting those numbers that I got from these three manufacturers. I'm going to roll that into the, uh, into the description as well, just so you guys have that. 
save you guys maybe some emailing and stuff. Anyway, so you're going to need your strip slide, your iron sights, uh, and again, you'll want to probably install those first. Your Whatever red dot you're putting on there, or maybe you're just preparing for the future and you've got the cover plate, whatever there. Also, in with your Brownell slide, you should have a couple different lengths of mounting screws. And then you're also going to need a slide parts kit. I made sure to pick up an OEM Glock slide parts kit. There's mixed reviews on the different aftermarket ones. And so I figure if I'm trusting OEM Glock parts in my Glock as it stands, I'd go back with them. And then in my case, because I currently have a Glock 23 with a conversion barrel. I needed a Glock 19 barrel. And I went with a Combat Armory barrel. The reviews on them are overwhelmingly good and the cost is really low. Um, and I went ahead and got the threaded barrel uh, and a thread protector. Um, you know, may or may not ever need this, but I can always have it and not use it. It's difficult to use it. If you don't have it, uh, this will necessitate me making some modifications to my holsters, uh, but we'll get to that as we go. One other thing that you're going to want is a channel liner installation tool for the Striker channel liner. I ordered one of those. I put everything for this in this box, the slide, all the little parts and pieces. My channel liner installation tool has grown legs and walked off. So I'm going to attempt to do this without one. And um, this may end up being a to be continued video if I fail terribly. We're going to start by opening up our slide completion kit. We have our striker spring, our rear cover, our recoil spring and guide rod, our striker, the aforementioned channel liner, the extractor rod, the tension spring for the extractor rod, the plastic end cap for the extractor rod, we have our safety plunger, We have our extractor, and we have the various bits that go on our striker. So if you are just replacing the components inside of an already completed slide, you might get away with reusing your channel liner. However, this is a brand new uh, slide, so I'm, we're going to have to install a channel liner. There's a chamfered end on that and a straight end. The chamfered end goes in first. I'm not going to lie, I'm a little terrified here. I'm actually going to use a, a safety flag and see if we can push it in with this. I'm not going to lie here, I am super nervous. All right, and that feels like it's basically bottomed out. Now I'm going to take a 5 16 punch and do a lot of praying as I tap this on home. Ladies and gentlemen, I think it worked. Yeah, so the channel liner installation tool is only maybe ten dollars I got mine off of eBay you're gonna want to make sure to have one of those that that was unnecessarily unnecessarily frightening all right so your striker you're gonna have your rear uh, striker spring sure your rear striker guide I'm sure there's an official name for this. I don't know what it is. And we're going to take this spring and slide it on. And then we got to compress this spring down. 
Hey, look, there's a little groove here in the slide. Let's see if we can utilize this. So what we have to do is we have to get this spring pushed down in place. Like so. And then we have to put these two uh, striker cups on here. And then we let the let the spring up to meet it. Now the one thing is the seam in those cups, you want to make sure, I don't know if you'll be able to see that, the seam in those cups is right, right there. You want to make sure that the end of your spring is not right with the seam there or it can cause separation. Alright, and then the last thing we need to do is we need to put the spring on our extractor tension rod and then the plastic end on the other end of that. And then from here it's basic assembly just like if you'd taken down your if you done completely stripped your slide for cleaning. So we're going to put in our safety plunger. We're going to push up on it. And then we're going to put our extractor in place, which will hold our safety plunger. That safety plunger is spring loaded. We we'll put our striker into the striker channel, which is a snug fit on a brand new install. And that's keyed, it can only go in one way. And then we put our extractor rod in. What this does is once the end plate is on our slide, it keeps tension against your extractor claw. The extractor claw is metal, your rear plate is polymer. One end of your rod is metal, and then the spring-loaded end is polymer. It's metal against metal and polymer against polymer. All right, and then we're going to push. You got to push the uh, plastic on the striker. It appears as though maybe my channel liner is not far enough in. So we slide that in, we slide the extractor tension spring in, and then that rear plate will click into place. Installation of the barrel is pretty obvious. Then you put your guide rod and ring recoil spring assembly in place, making sure that you catch it on the upper uh, barrel lug. So just like that, our slide is assembled. I'm going to be reusing the lower that I have for now. And a function check. So that's working. Now, we need to go ahead and install our Hollis and Optic. Now, I've already taken it loose from the Picatinny attachment. It does come with a battery pre installed. So, we're going to need to set that on the slide. And I'm going to guess that my quarter inch screws are going to be the right ones. Yep, they seat snugly. So let's check the owner's manual and see if it gives us a torque specification. Oh, well, believe it or not, finding that torque value was uh, nearly impossible. I did find that Trigicon recommends 9 to 12 
uh, inch pounds of torque for the RMR. My wheeler only goes down to 10 inch pounds. So we're going to set this guy to 10 inch pounds and uh, hope that I don't strip a screw here. I've done a lot of hoping on this, huh? All right, and then you're going to want to use some purple Loctite because these are itty bitty screws. They're uh, 0.255. Um, so, yeah, blue Loctite is supposed to use starting at a uh, quarter inch. So. so, what we'll do here, I'm going to put one little drop down in the Woo, threads, little drop, big drop, a drop, and we'll put just a little bit onto the threads of the screw. And we're going to run the screw in. We're going to roll it back out, make sure to coat those threads really well. And put, take it on back in. Torque it down. Sorry, I guess you can't see what I'm doing there. All righty. And now the other side. And again, we just take it down until the click stick clicks. All right, and the last thing I'm gonna do, I borrowed uh, some nail polish from my wife and daughters. And I'm just gonna put little drop of nail polish on each of these screws because obviously it'd be a very bad thing if those screws walked out. And so there we go. I now have a slide mounted optic on my Glock. Well, it was Glock 23. Now it is a Glock 19. So with that, I'm ready to just slap it in the holster and carry it on the daily, right? You could do that. I wouldn't recommend it, though, and that's not what I'm going to do. For one thing, I have a feeling it's going to take several hundred presentations before I can just present and find that dot. Number two... Until I've sent a few rounds downrange, probably a couple hundred rounds downrange, I'm not willing to trust this. There's no reason for it not to go bang. The striker does, in fact, drop. The trigger resets. But it's just not something I'm willing to risk until I've actually had it at the range. And finally, it um, it won't retain in my holster anymore because my holster wasn't made with the thought of an extended threaded barrel in mind. So I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to do some cutting on my holster. Uh, not that I think that that's a bad thing. It's just a thing that's going to have to be done. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I certainly hope that maybe this helped you. Even if you're not planning on putting a slide together anytime in the, in the near future, maybe it helped for you to know a little bit more about what it takes uh, to strip your slide for cleaning or, or whatever. Anyway, I really appreciate you guys watching. Um, I'm really excited because just this week the channel passed 100 subscribers. I, th I want to thank all of my subscribers, especially those of you who are out there sharing the channel. Uh, you guys really are doing a lot of legwork to help the channel grow, and I appreciate it. I want to say thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys really help. Uh, with the financial side of running a gun tube channel. Now, projects like this, uh, I'm not counting so much on your support for because this is going to be my carry gun, and that's not on you, that's on me. I, I definitely make sure to use uh, channel funds for things that are for the channel, expressly for the channel. 
like the uh, Palmetto State Freedom Build torture testing that we're going through. If you're not in a position to support the channel, do at least like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that notification bell or you're not ever going to know when new content has gone up. And make sure to follow the channel on social media. Right now we're on Instagram and Facebook. We are Tactical Review 2019 on both of those platforms, and uh, you'll get some of those sneak peek pictures and just various musings, the occasional political discourse, and just all sorts of stuff that you really won't get just watching the videos. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, shoot straight, stay safe.